Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins for the intentions of all my relatives and friends and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of July, for the pastoral care of the sick. We pray that the sacrament of the anointing of the sick confer to those who receive it and their loved ones the power of the Lord and become ever more a visible sign of compassion and hope for all. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we begin this day, let us begin by spending time with the Lord. As we have decided to welcome this day in the presence of the Lord, let us begin by thanking Him for all that He has done for us, all the blessings that He has bestowed on us, and most importantly, for all the graces, for all the favours that He has given us right from our birth till now. On many occasions, we see that because we are caught up with so many other activities, because of our busy schedule. We don't pay attention to these small details that are there in our lives. Very often these graces, these blessings which are so important in our lives are kept aside. And therefore today as we begin today's morning prayer, we ask the Lord to give us the grace so that we may be able to appreciate the good things that He has done for us. And therefore it is appropriate that we begin today's prayer by thanking the Lord for all that He has done for us. First and foremost, we thank the Lord for the gift of life, for giving us talents, abilities and various opportunities in our lives. We also thank the Lord for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. Now we see that there are so many people who have been instrumental in our lives in so many ways. These people have dedicated their time and effort, and thus they have shaped and helped us become who we are. And therefore we thank the Lord for their presence in our lives, and we also ask the Lord to bless them so that they may be able to have the fullness of life. We also thank the Lord for the gift of this day. Yet another day that we have been given to 
make good use of our talents, of our abilities and more importantly to make a difference not only in our lives but also in the lives of those around us. We also thank the Lord for the various opportunities that He has given us. Opportunities to put our talents, to put our abilities to use and at the same time opportunities to help others make a difference in their lives. Lord, we also want to thank you for all the experiences that you have given us. Some of these experiences may be really good. We may want to cherish these experiences. But there may be other experiences which may be bitter, which may be harsh. Nonetheless, these bitter experiences may have taught us a lot in life. These are the experiences that have made us stronger. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for giving us these experiences, for making us better individuals, for making us stronger, and thus for preparing us to face the challenges in life. And therefore, my dear friends, as we participate in this morning prayer, let us ask the Lord for this grace that we may be able to radiate His presence to the world around us, that we may be able to become messengers of peace, joy and love, spreading his message of goodness, spreading his message of peace and love to the world around us. And therefore, let us ask the Lord to accompany us in whatever we do today, so that every action, every word may radiate his love, peace and joy. My dear friends, let us now reflect and meditate on Psalm 60. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm. We shall, in general, uh, just take a look at what the psalm is exactly trying to tell us. What are the themes that are present in the psalm? And then we shall take a look at the psalm in detail, looking at each of these themes, each of these aspects in detail. And when we have an overview or when we look at the psalm, at a glance, we see that Psalm 60 is a psalm of lament that is attributed to David and it is believed to be written during a time of distress and defeat, possibly after a military setback. Now we see that setbacks are very common in life and sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to deal with these setbacks. We have planned something. Things don't go according to plan and therefore we feel disappointed, we lose our faith, our trust and hope. We get disappointed and we are not interested in anything else later on then. And possibly in those moments, this is a psalm that can help us to collect ourselves, to rejuvenate, to place our faith and trust in the Lord and allow Him to bring us out of that situation. Now, we see that the psalm can be divided in four main sections. And in verses 1 to 3, we see that there is an acknowledgement of God's rejection and a plea for restoration. In the second section, we see a reflection of God's past deliverance and a request for his help. And this we will find in verses 4 to 8. In verses 9 to 11, we see there is a cry for God's intervention against the enemy. And finally, in verses 12 to 14, there is a declaration of confidence in God's victory. And therefore, overall, when we take a look at Psalm 60, we see that Psalm 60 will reflect on David's plea for restoration and victory in the face of distress and defeat. And this psalm highlights the importance of seeking God's help and acknowledging His power and deliverance. This psalm can also serve as a reminder of the need to depend on God's intervention, especially in times of trouble, and to trust in the faithfulness of the Lord and thus rejoice in the victory that the Lord provides us. And now let us take a look at the psalm in detail. Now, in the first section of the psalm, we see that David acknowledges the sense of God's rejection 
and he pleads for restoration. So in a way here we see that David is probably sensing that he has gone away from the Lord and therefore now he wants to restore back. He wants to come back to the Lord. He wants to undo the wrong that he has done. And here he begins by expressing his feeling of being rejected and cast off by God. Once again, pretty strong at this point of time. And here we see that he does this by symbolizing it or comparing it to the breaching of the walls of the land. And therefore here we see that David now recognizes the severity of the situation and therefore he implores God to intervene and restore his favor and protection. So he has gone away from the Lord and now he wants the Lord to help him come back to him. And therefore we see that in this section it is all about knowing one's weakness. Therefore in our lives too when we become aware of our weakness, of our shortcomings. That is the first step towards transformation. It is only once you are aware of what you have done wrong or once you are aware of the areas where you are going away from the Lord, it is only then can you begin the remedy or the corrective measures. Moving on to the second section of the psalm, we see that David reflects on God's past deliverance and he seeks God's help once again. Now he recalls how God has given his people a banner, a symbol of victory and therefore he asks the Lord to do the same. Now David acknowledges that it is only through God's power and help that victory can be achieved. And therefore what does he do? He expresses his dependence on God's assistance in the midst of defeat. So he already knows that he is deep in trouble. But still he has faith that the Lord can do something about it. And my dear friends, this is something that all of us need to have. We too need to have that confidence that the Lord will do something to help us, to guide us and bring us out from those stressful, difficult moments. Now in the third section, we see that David cries out for God's intervention against his enemy. And therefore he pleads for God to extend his help and to defeat the enemy who has brought devastation and affliction upon them. Now David also will acknowledge the significance of God's intervention and thus he recognizes that his victory is completely dependent on God's action. And therefore this aspect of surrendering, this aspect of placing oneself in the hands of the Lord, allowing the Lord to guide and protect. This is very important and is explicitly seen in this psalm. And therefore in the final section, we see that David declares his confidence in God's victory. He proclaims that God's right hand, symbolizing his strength and power, will lead to triumph and will lead him to victory against his enemies. And therefore we see that David acknowledges that victory will ultimately depend on God. It is God who will do everything for him. And thus he expresses that he himself needs to place his faith and trust in the Lord and that the Lord will act on behalf of him and also on behalf of all the people. And therefore my dear friends, as we reflect on this psalm, let us spend time in assimilating it. Let the psalm take root in us so that when we are faced in these difficult moments, when we feel that we are deep down in trouble, this psalm can act as a great source of consolation. It can help us to regroup. It can help us to get back on our feet by placing our faith and trust in the Lord. And therefore, my dear friends, as we have reflected and meditated on this psalm, let us now close our eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has cleansed us from our sin. 
he has taken away all our sins and he has given us a new life lord we thank you for giving us the holy spirit and therefore lord we ask you to bless us and protect us at every step of the way be our guiding force be there to always show us the way and for all this lord we thank you we praise you and we glorify you you have protected us and you have guarded us to the night you have given us this time to spend with you you have woken us up this morning and you have given us good health of mind and body and for all this lord for your love for your mercy for your generosity we thank you and we praise you lord you are a merciful god you have blessed us in so many ways as you reflect on our blessings as you reflect on all the good things that have happened to us as we reflect on our experiences lord we want to thank you we want to praise you for making us better individuals and now my dear friends let us spend a few moments in silence and let us reflect on the psalm let us see what touched us could be a word could be a phrase or could be a sentence or a thought remain with that and allow the psalm to take root in you so that ultimately your words your actions will radiate the love peace and joy of christ to the world around pray to saint michael the archangel for protection saint michael the archangel defend us in battle be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil may god rebuke him we humbly pray and do thou o prince of the heavenly host by the power of god thrust into hell satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls amen act of adoration o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude pray for souls in purgatory. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine son Jesus in union with the masses said throughout the world today. for all the holy souls in purgatory for sinners everywhere for sinners in the universal church those in my own home and within my family amen may the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be 
world without end. Amen.